family speaking out about mental illness, saying that topic should be front and center in this tragedy. Tatum Ingram was only 12 years old. He was a joy of my life. You know, he was everything. He was everything that, that a father could ever want in the child. The seventh grader shot and killed on Saturday morning inside of his home on the city's south side. Police say the shooter was his own mom. Fallon Harris now facing murder charges. This is a hurting feeling. It's, it's, it's indescribable. Caden's dad got the call just a short time after investigators say Harris opened fire inside of the home in 8,000 block of South Bennett Avenue. The shots fired after investigators say she asked her son to hand over a memory card. When he didn't have it, detectives say she shot him. The child was still conscious, but that's when investigators say Harris walked back again and opened fire a second time. Caden died. Because his mother is a loving mother. She loved him more than she loved anything in this world. Family members say Harris was struggling mentally. They say she just saw a therapist the day before the shooting. People need to know that mental illness is real. Right now, Harris is held without bond on the South Side. Just a day after meeting with a therapist for the first time, Fallon Harris shot her cherished 12-year-old son twice in the head Sunday. Fallon Harris's family, worried about her mental health, had encouraged her to get treatment, advice the longtime city worker finally heeded Friday, meeting with a therapist for the first time. But just a day later, her family learned the true depths of her despair. Harris now stands accused of killing her cherished 12-year-old son inside their South Chicago home. Caden Ingram died from multiple gunshot wounds to the head, according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. Though separated, Ingram said he and Harris had remained close for their children's sake. She loved Caden more than anything in the world, said Ingram, who's trying to pick up the pieces and plan his son's funeral. I'm losing a young god. I'm losing a young genius, he said of Caden, who loved professional wrestling, anime, video games, and history. I'm losing everything I had in this world. Everything. Harris now faces a single count of first-degree murder in his killing, at the home in the 8,000 block of South Bennett Avenue, according to officials. The 37-year-old was denied bail during her initial court appearance Sunday. During the hearing, Cook County Assistant State's Attorney Eugene Wood explained Harris's violent outburst began around 10.15 a.m. Saturday, when she pressed Caden about the whereabouts of a digital memory card she had removed from her vehicle the previous night. After Caden was unable to produce the memory card when his mother demanded it at gunpoint, she shot him, Wood said Sunday during Harris's initial court appearance. A video surveillance camera inside the home captured audio of that first confrontation and gunshot. Harris then answered a phone call before demanding the memory card again from Caden, who was still conscious and crying, Wood said. When he said he didn't know where it was, she shot him again. That second shot, which caused Caden to collapse on the kitchen floor, was clearly captured on video, Wood said. Harris later admitted to two family members that she had shot her son because he wouldn't return the memory card, Wood said. In turn, they both called police and Ingram who met officers at the home. Harris later admitted to two family members that she had shot her son because he wouldn't return the memory card, Wood said. In turn, they both called police and Ingram, who met officers at the home. When she answered the door, Harris confessed to the officers and led them to a silver revolver, according to Wood, who said she had a concealed carry license and owned two guns. Caden was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead according to Wood and the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. He died from multiple gunshot wounds to the head. Several hours after the shooting, officers filed in and out of the brick house, some carrying bags of evidence. Tearful relatives later arrived, hugging each other across the street from the scene, but they declined to speak with a reporter. Wood directly acknowledged Harris's mental state, noting family members reported she had been displaying paranoid behavior and complaining that people were out to get her. Harris was disruptive and combative early in the hearing and later broke down and appeared to cry when she was given an opportunity to speak. Generational trauma refers to the emotional and psychological wounds passed down through successive generations. In the context of the black community, the legacy of slavery, systemic racism, and other forms of oppression have profoundly impacted mental health outcomes. However, by acknowledging and addressing this trauma, individuals and communities can begin the journey of healing and fostering mental well-being.
historical and ongoing experiences of discrimination, police violence, inequitable access to health care and education, economic disparities, and mass incarceration have created a complex web of trauma within the black community. These traumatic experiences not only affect individuals directly, but are often transmitted across generations, perpetuating a cycle of pain, depression, anxiety, and other mental health challenges. Recognizing the existence of generational trauma is essential for both individuals and society as a whole. However, it is equally important to understand that trauma does not define an individual, nor should it be a barrier to living a fulfilling life. Overcoming generational trauma requires a comprehensive approach that takes into account the unique experiences and needs of each individual. One of the most crucial steps in healing generational trauma is seeking professional help. Mental health professionals, such as therapists and counselors, play a vital role in providing support, guidance, and evidence-based treatment modalities tailored to individual needs. Therapy can offer a safe space for individuals to explore their emotions, challenge negative thought patterns, and develop healthy coping mechanisms to navigate the impacts of trauma. In addition to therapeutic interventions, community support is instrumental in overcoming generational trauma. Building connections with others who have shared experiences can foster a sense of belonging and provide a supportive network for healing. Community organizations, cultural and religious institutions, and peer support groups offer platforms for individuals to share their stories, learn from one another, and collectively work towards breaking the cycle of generational trauma. Education also plays a vital role in healing and overcoming generational trauma. By understanding the historical context and social determinants that have contributed to the trauma, individuals can challenge the narratives that perpetuate stigma, internalized racism, and negative self-perception. Education empowers individuals to advocate for themselves, seek resources, and foster resilience in the face of adversity. Finally, it is essential to recognize and honor the resilience and strength within the black community. Generational trauma may be a significant challenge, but it does not define the community. Celebrating culture, embracing identity, and practicing self-care are vital aspects of healing and reclaiming mental well-being. In conclusion, Overcoming generational trauma and healing mental health in the black community requires a multifaceted approach. Accessing professional help, building supportive communities, educating oneself, and embracing cultural resilience are crucial steps towards breaking the cycle of trauma. By collectively addressing generational trauma, we can create a society that values and prioritizes mental well-being for all individuals, fostering a healthier and more equitable future. Mental health is an essential aspect of overall well-being. Yet, addressing mental health issues remains a significant challenge, particularly within the black community. Historically, mental health concerns within this community have been stigmatized and often overlooked. This has led to a lack of understanding, limited access to resources, and inadequate support for individuals facing mental health challenges. However, it is crucial to recognize and combat these stigmas so that everyone, regardless of their racial or ethnic background, can receive the care they deserve. Stigma surrounding mental health is a deeply rooted problem within society, but it can be particularly pronounced in the black community. The reasons for this are multifaceted. Social, cultural, and historical factors have contributed to the development of these stigmas. Racism, discrimination, and the pressure to conform to societal expectations can drastically impact an individual's mental well-being. Additionally, the stereotype of strength and resilience within the black community often discourages seeking help and discussing personal struggles openly. These stigmas can have severe consequences. Individuals affected by mental health issues may feel isolated, misunderstood, and reluctant to seek professional assistance. The consequences of this reluctance can be devastating, resulting in prolonged suffering deteriorating mental health, and even suicidal thoughts or actions. Therefore, it is imperative that we actively work toward addressing the stigma of mental health in the black community. Education plays a crucial role in combating the stigma. By promoting awareness, providing accurate information, and dispelling misconceptions about mental health, we can help dismantle the barriers preventing individuals from seeking help. Educating both the black community and the wider society is essential in fostering understanding, empathy, and support for those struggling with their mental well-being.
Accessible mental health resources are also vital in making a difference. Increasing the availability and affordability of mental health services within the Black community can encourage individuals to seek help without fear of judgment or discrimination. Community organizations, healthcare providers, and policymakers must collaborate to implement policies and initiatives that prioritize mental health support and representation for Black individuals. Furthermore, encouraging open dialogue is crucial in addressing the stigma. By fostering safe spaces for discussion, we can create opportunities for individuals to share their experiences, seek support, and find solace in knowing they are not alone. Prominent individuals within the Black community, such as leaders, role models, and celebrities, can play a significant role in breaking down barriers by sharing their own experiences with mental health challenges. It is essential that we collectively address the stigma of mental health in the Black community. By recognizing the harmful impact of stigmatization and actively working toward promoting understanding and support, we can create a stronger, healthier, and more inclusive community. Everyone deserves access to the care they need, regardless of their racial or ethnic background. Let us strive to shatter these stigmas and foster a society where mental health is prioritized and no one is left to suffer in silence. Introduction. Paranoid behavior is a complex psychological condition characterized by intense suspicion, mistrust, and an irrational fear of being harmed or betrayed. It can significantly impact an individual's relationships, work, and overall quality of life. If you have a loved one dealing with paranoid tendencies, it's essential to understand their unique challenges and provide the necessary support. Recognizing the signs. Identifying paranoid behavior. Paranoid behavior can manifest in various ways, making it important to recognize the signs. Some common indicators include constant questioning of others' motives, a strong belief in elaborate, unfounded conspiracy theories, hypersensitivity to criticism, and an excessive need for reassurance. Your loved one may also exhibit secretive behaviors, have difficulty forgiving or forgetting perceived slights, and may withdraw from social interactions due to fear or suspicion. Understanding the underlying causes. While the exact causes of paranoid behavior are still being studied, it is believed to stem from a combination of environmental, genetic, and psychological factors. Traumatic events, such as past experiences of betrayal or abuse, can contribute to the development of paranoia. Additionally, certain mental health conditions, such as schizophrenia, can also trigger paranoid symptoms in individuals. Tips for supporting your loved one. When someone you care about experiences paranoid thoughts and behaviors, offering support and understanding is crucial. Here are some ways to help them navigate the challenges. 1. Educate yourself. Take the time to learn about paranoid behavior, its causes, and possible treatments. This knowledge will help you empathize and communicate effectively with your loved one. 2. Maintain open communication. Create a safe space for your loved one to openly discuss their fears and concerns. Let them know that you are there to listen without judgment. Be patient, as it may take time for them to open up about their thoughts and feelings. 3. Validate their experiences. Avoid dismissing or trivializing their fears, even if they seem irrational or unfounded. Instead, acknowledge their feelings and reassure them that you understand their viewpoint. 4. Encourage professional help. Suggesting therapy or counseling to your loved one can be a helpful step towards their recovery. Professional intervention can provide them with coping mechanisms and strategies to manage their paranoid thoughts effectively. 5. Promote a healthy lifestyle. Encourage your loved one to adopt a well-balanced lifestyle that includes regular exercise, proper nutrition, and adequate sleep. These lifestyle changes can contribute positively to their overall mental and emotional well-being. 6. Be vigilant but respectful. While it's important to be aware of any erratic or dangerous behaviors, it is crucial to respect your loved one's boundaries and privacy. Avoid becoming overly intrusive, which can worsen their paranoia and strain your relationship. Conclusion. Supporting a loved one with paranoid behavior can be challenging, but with patience, empathy, and respect, you can offer them the care and understanding they need. Remember, paranoid tendencies are not a choice, but a manifestation of their underlying mental health condition. By providing a safe and supportive environment, you can potentially help them navigate through their fears and work towards a more fulfilling life.
Living with paranoid thoughts can be overwhelming and isolating. It can feel like you're constantly on edge, distrustful of others, and consumed by fear. These thoughts can be so powerful that they dictate how you interact with the world, affecting your relationships, work, and overall well-being. But it's important to remember that you are not alone. Many people struggle with paranoid thoughts, and there is hope for overcoming them. By gaining a better understanding of your thoughts and learning coping strategies, you can regain control of your life and find peace of mind. One of the first steps in overcoming paranoid thoughts is to acknowledge and accept them. It's natural to feel ashamed or embarrassed about having paranoid thoughts, but denying them will only make them stronger. Instead, try to observe and understand your thoughts without judgment. This can help you gain insight into the underlying fears and triggers that fuel your paranoia. Seeking support from trusted friends, family members, or mental health professionals can also be incredibly beneficial. Talking about your paranoid thoughts with others can provide you with perspective, empathy, and reassurance that you are not alone in your struggles. Additionally, a mental health professional can work with you to develop personalized coping strategies and tools for managing your paranoid thoughts. Practicing mindfulness and self-care can also help you find relief from paranoid thoughts. Sir. Engaging in activities that bring you joy, relaxation, and a sense of grounding can help you stay present and focused in the moment, rather than becoming consumed by fearful thoughts about the future. Mindfulness practices, such as meditation and deep breathing, can also help you calm your mind and alleviate anxiety. Remember that overcoming paranoid thoughts is a journey, and it's okay to seek help and take small steps towards healing. With patience, self-compassion, and the right support, it is possible to live a fulfilling and peaceful life, free from the grips of fear and paranoia. Mental health has long been an area that society cast aside, a silent struggle sometimes shrouded by stigma and misunderstanding. However, as time progresses, so does our understanding of mental health, ultimately paving the way for a more compassionate and empathetic approach towards those who battle various mental illnesses. In recent years, there has been a collective effort to break the barriers surrounding mental health. People from all walks of life, including celebrities, activists, and healthcare professionals, have come forward to share their own experiences with mental health challenges. This courageous step has not only helped to diminish the stigma associated with mental health, but has also provided hope and inspiration to those in similar situations. Recognizing the importance of mental well-being, governments and organizations worldwide are now investing more resources into mental health services and awareness campaigns. Schools and workplaces are implementing mental health education programs, aiming to equip individuals with the necessary tools to understand and address their own mental health needs. Moreover, the power of technology has played a significant role in spreading awareness and providing support. Online communities and social media platforms have become a safe space for individuals to share their stories, seek advice, and find solace. Various mental health applications and websites offer resources such as therapy sessions, mindfulness exercises, and guided meditation practices, making mental health support more accessible than ever before. While progress has been made, it is important to acknowledge that the work is far from over. It is integral that we continue to challenge the stereotypes and misconceptions surrounding mental health and promote an environment of empathy, understanding, and acceptance. This involves actively listening to individuals who open up about their struggles, offering support and empathy rather than judgment. Closing remarks on mental health should emphasize the importance of self-care and seeking help when needed, encouraging individuals to prioritize their mental well-being and reminding them that they are not alone can make a significant difference in their journey towards recovery. In conclusion, the closing remarks on mental health must reflect the collective effort being made to break the stigma surrounding mental illness. By fostering understanding, compassion, and open dialogue, we can create a world where individuals feel safe and supported in their mental health journeys. Let us continue to challenge misconceptions, advocate for mental health care, and empower others to take charge of their mental well-being. Together, we can build a society that truly embraces mental health and nurtures the potential for happiness and fulfillment in every individual.